Oh hi guys, happy Sunday. Okay, today I'm going to share with you how to use the term hypertonic, hypotonic and isotonic correctly. And not only that, I'm also going to show you how to use these terms properly and correctly in question. So, stay tuned. Here, I would like to highlight that hypertonic, hypotonic and isotonic are comparative words. Okay, what do I mean by that? To show that uh, hypertonic and hypotonic are comparative words, so we are going to discuss a system whereby you have A and uh, B and these two systems are properly separated by semi-permeable membranes. As you all know that osmosis, when you are defining osmosis, uh, it is defined as the diffusion of water molecules from high water concentration to low water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So a system must have a semi-permeable membrane in order for the osmosis to occur. So in this case, please note that water, which is represented by the eye-like structure, it has, you have more of that in A compared to B. And the star-like cube structure here, it is uh, representing the solute. So you have more of that in B compared to A. So how are we going to write this? Okay. So I've also given you some wrong um, way of writing, the one, the common sum of the students, right? A is hypotonic, B is hypertonic. Oh, come on guys. No, you have to remember hypertonic, hypotonic are comparative words. This is what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay, A is hypotonic to B while B is hypertonic to A. So this is the correct way of writing this. Alright, the second part of our discussion here will be the diffusion of water by osmosis. Um, the water molecules will always, always will diffuse from a hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution no matter what by osmosis until they reach equilibrium. Alright, so that is an obvious case because hypotonic solution has more water molecules compared to hypertonic solution and osmosis being a passive process, it has to move from higher concentration gradient to lower concentration gradient. So if you notice in this system, all right, if you notice in this system, the water molecules will always move from A to B. The molecules, water molecules will move from A to B until they reach equilibrium. When you want to define the diffusion of water for this particular system, it will be stated as water molecules will diffuse from A to B by osmosis. Note here, do not forget the word osmosis. Alright, it is very very essential to include the mode of transportation which is by osmosis in your answer. Well, the water molecules have diffused from A to B, oh, obviously because A is hypotonic to B. So, of course, water molecules will always will diffuse from A to B because they are hypotonic. So, what will happen? What will be the final consequences to the system? Ah, that is what you need to define in your answers. Okay. So, the water molecules will be equally distributed in both the systems, meaning A will have equal amount of water molecules compared to B, right? So, but then please remember, please note that I did not talk anything about the solute. That means the solute will stay put in the system. They won't move anywhere. It's the water will be diffusing here and there, right? So, the solute will not move anywhere. The water is the one that moves from A to B until they reach equilibrium. Now, it's time to put all the elements together the environment, the water diffusion and also the final consequences on the system. For this particular system that we've been discussing all the while, A is hypotonic to B, water diffuses from A to B by osmosis and water molecules will be equal in both A and B. So yeah, that's about it.
Of course, my video will be having some exercise done. Don't think I'm going to let you off the hook without any exercise. All right. Okay, so let's get to the exercise today. So explain what happened to the red blood cell in solution M and N respectively. Remember, there's no magic here. I'm just going to apply all the elements that I taught you so far to obtain all the six marks that's stated here all right this is a very very common spm question that you may get okay so let's try this actually guys i would love to have you try this out and come back to me with the answers but since this is like online thing of course that is not going to happen so we just straight go into the answers all right okay so when you in solution m what exactly happens to the red blood cell you see here i'm just applying all the three mantras that i taught you all right so number one define the environment number two diffusion of the water from where to where from hypotonic to hypertonic and what is the final consequences on the cell or the system that's all all right okay so we are at the final part of our video today remember when you are dealing with the question that has hypertonic hypotonic and isotonic always follow these three mantras all right define the environment diffusion of the water by osmosis okay and the consequences to the cell or the system never ever deviate from this if you deviate from this, then surely you are not going to get any marks. Okay, so if you want full marks for the questions, please follow these three mantras. Okay, and more videos like this are going to follow. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay close.